In this example, we'll use practice exercise 14-2A that can be found in your textbook on page 652. We are going to journalize the entry to issue a bond, and we will be also doing practice exercise 14-3A, where we're going to journalize the entry to record our first interest payment and our amortization. In the example, it tells us that on the first day of the fiscal year, a company issues a $2 million, 8% five-year bond that pays interest semi-annually of $80,000. And they received cash of $1,920,873. A bond is a long-term note. It is a liability to the business that issues the note. The $2 million 8% five-year bond that pays interest semi-annually is what we call the bond indenture or the contract that we have with the bondholder. We have agreed to pay the bondholder 8% interest each year for five years and at the end of five years we will issue them a check for two million dollars. Notice here where the interest calculation, they divide it in half because we pay interest semi-annually. All interest rates are expressed in annual terms, so we have to cut that number in half. So we're going to journalize the issuance of this bond. So on January 1st, we are issuing the bond because we need a loan of cash. And they tell us that by issuing this $2 million bond, we are receiving $1,920,873. That means that there is a discount on bonds payable. There's a discount on bonds payable when the cash that we receive is less than the face value of the bond. The face value of the bond was $2 million, but we only received $1,920,873, meaning we have a discount of $79,127. And we have to record our liability of bonds payable to the full face value of $2 million. Your bonds payable will always be recorded at the full face value. It will never be recorded for more or less. Continuing with this information, we move on to practice exercise 14.3a, where we're going to journalize the first interest payment and the amortization that's related to our bond discount. And they tell us to round to the nearest whole dollar. So let's assume that our first semi-annual interest payment is on June 30th we have to pay that full $80,000 to our bondholder at the end of June as interest on the loan that we have. We record interest expense because it's costing us money to borrow this loan. We then have to record an amortization of our discount. on bonds payable and record the cash that we have to pay. They told us in the problem that we have to send the bondholder $80,000 every six months. This number is going to stay constant for us. It was stated in our contract that we had to pay 8% semi-annually, so 8% each year cut into two different payments. So the 80,000, again, stays constant for us every six months. 
we need to amortize the discount, meaning we have to bring down the amount of our discount on bonds payable every time we make an interest payment. And we do that by taking the total discount amount and dividing it by the number of interest payments. So for our example, we had a total discount of 79,127, and we're gonna divide it by the number of interest payments. They tell us that it was a five-year bond, but we pay interest semi-annually, which we means we pay two interest payments per year, which results in 10 total interest payments. So every single time that we do an interest payment, we are going to reduce our discount on bonds payable by $7,913. My discount went on as a debit on January 1st. So to reduce it, we will credit it on the interest payment date. Therefore, in total, we're gonna record interest expense of $87,913. We're recognizing more interest because on the due date or maturity date, we are going to pay back more, the $2 million, than what was originally given to us, $1,920,873. Since we're following the straight line method for amortization, this journal entry would be exactly the same for every single interest payment that we do for the next five years.